Hello, I'm John Porter. I'm the Urban Agriculture Program Coordinator with Nebraska Extension. And as the weather gets colder and fall comes around, we start seeing pumpkins and squash and gourds and all those things appear along with all the other fall decor and the items uh, at the garden center, at the grocery store. And you'll see them on your front porch and on your neighbor's front porch. Uh, and those crops are actually very interesting to think about and to look at because not only are they pretty, but a lot of them are actually pretty good eating as well. So today what I want to talk about are the different types of pumpkin and squash and gourds, uh, whether they're edible or not. And we'll talk a little bit about the, the history and science uh, behind these different crops. So you might think of Halloween coming up and you think about pumpkins and you think about your jack-o-lantern so you have your carved pumpkin uh, but most people don't realize that pumpkins were not the original crop used to make jack-o-lanterns because the legends of Halloween and all of the things that go around that holiday uh, are European in tradition and pumpkins are actually native to the New World, to the Americas and these traditions started before there was really exploration to the New World. So the original jack-o-lanterns were made out of very large turnips. Uh, so if you think a jack-o-lantern is scary today, think about a turnip uh, as a jack-o-lantern and it might be just a little bit scarier for some people. So we actually have pumpkins that we call jack-o-lantern pumpkins, uh, and they're the larger pumpkins. So this is a small version of a jack-o-lantern pumpkin, uh, but this is one that you will find at your grocery store or your garden center or at the farmer's market. Uh, and these are really good because the, the larger size give you more space for carving, so you can put a nice face or a design on here, uh, and you open it up. Uh, and you uh, have all the seeds inside, which people also like to roast. Uh, now, these are okay eating. Uh, if you get one of these, uh, you can definitely uh, turn it into something. You can roast it, uh, bake it. Uh, you could turn it into a pie. Uh, however, uh, there are pumpkins uh, and squash that are better eating uh, than the regular jack-o-lantern. So I would stick with eating the seeds on these uh, and find a different pumpkin uh, to make your pumpkin pie out of if you're making a homemade pumpkin pie totally from scratch. Uh, these pumpkins are lots of uh, uh, very common in the in the grocery store. You'll see them in almost every grocery store, every market this time of year. Uh, so they're not not really hard to come by. Uh, so you can grab this. I would say that if you're gonna carve it up for decoration uh, and you leave it out uh, for decoration, that then it is not uh, recommended that you eat the pumpkin after it's been sitting out because of uh, food safety issues. If you want to eat a pumpkin, what you wanna get is actually a pie pumpkin. Uh, they're a much smaller pumpkin, as you can see. Uh, usually, um, sometimes a little bit darker in color than a lot of the jack-o'-lanterns are much lighter versions of the jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. But a pie pumpkin is better eating for a few different reasons. Number one, the flesh on it is a little bit denser, so it's a little creamier. Uh, the, the flesh, the, the part of the pumpkin that you eat, is a little bit stringier and water, waterier uh, in the jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. So uh, it's a texture thing uh, with this as well, but also the flavors are more concentrated and sweeter in the pie pumpkins. Uh, so they actually do have a better flavor uh, for eating. Uh, and you can find these at a lot of places. Sometimes if they're, they're setting out for decoration, you don't find these. Uh, and you usually, at a grocery store, will find these actually in the produce section, not sitting out front uh, as a display. Uh, so you might find it, and they might actually sell them by the pound instead of by the pumpkin. It really depends on where you buy them from. Uh, you can find all kinds of little pumpkins. So these are, are little uh, mini pumpkins as well, uh, more like a, a squash or a gourd. Uh, in their in their family uh, structure, uh, but these are actually edible as well. Uh, so I've seen these used uh, in different recipes where you might cut the center of it out, take out the seeds and stuff them and bake them. Uh, you could do that uh, either sweet or savory, uh, and they are perfectly edible. They do not have as much flavor as the pie pumpkin. Uh, as pumpkin goes, that is the most flavorful pumpkin uh, that you will find. Now, as you're at the grocery store, the farmer's market, the market, uh, you might find other things this time of year that look like they might be related uh, to these different crops, uh, and they are. Uh, we have uh, squash. 
uh, and gourds as well. Uh, and depending on uh, which one you pick up is good eating or not good eating. Uh, so the ones that are good eating are the squashes. And so we think about uh, things like uh, our butternut squash here. Uh, and this, even though it looks like a pumpkin because it's orange, this is actually an acorn squash. You can see that acorn shape there as well. This one's a little bit unusual in that most of them that you find are green uh, totally uh, and not orange. But this one has a little bit of... Uh, orange on it as well. Now there's all kinds of other squashes uh, and these are winter squashes so they're much different than what you would call a summer squash. So if you think about a summer squash you have zucchini and yellow squash. Uh, those things are called summer squash because you eat them in the summer because they don't store well. They have a very thin skin uh, and their flesh means that they don't store well. Whereas the winter squashes, the way that uh, their skin and their flesh uh, are put together means that you can store them for several months uh, if you grow them in your garden, uh, which is definitely something fun to do. Uh, but they will store for a long time, especially if you have a cool, dry place. Uh, and that's why a lot of uh, people grew them in throughout history uh, because they are uh, a very good storage crop. Uh, they actually come from uh, Native American gardening, uh, so they're actually a native crop to the United States. Uh, and so they were they were farmed by Native Americans, developed uh, that way. Uh, and even though they are not summer squash. Uh, there are interesting connections. A lot of them are actually the same species. Most people don't realize that the pumpkins and zucchini are the same exact species. Uh, they're the same plant uh, that you can uh, actually uh, get intercropping. So if you have both pumpkins and zucchini in your garden uh, and you save the seeds from them, you can get an interesting combination of pumpkin and zucchini uh, that I like to call a puccini. You can get an orange zucchini or a green pumpkin uh, and so far, all the ones that I have tried uh, do not taste very good. Uh, so uh, you get those interesting crosses. Uh, and then you move on to uh, the last grouping of the members of this family, and those are the gourds. Uh, and those are the things that are really weird looking. Uh, you'll find a lot of them uh, that are really warty. Those are like uh, traits that people really like because they look really really interesting and you find them in all different colors and shapes and sizes uh, and those are more for decoration. Uh, those you know technically are edible you can eat them if you really wanted to uh, but they are very hard usually uh, so they're very hard to cut or or open up and especially the larger ones uh, they you you almost have to have some sort of power tool to open them up. Uh, but also they just don't have the flavor and the sweetness that the pumpkins uh, and the squash do. So typically uh, we grow these for decoration only for our purposes. Uh, they would have had an edible uh, purpose in the past uh, as we uh, you know, see the, the evolution of all these different squashes and how they're related. Uh, but right now uh, there are much better things to, to eat. Uh, so like I said, the the best edible one uh, that I have here on the table is this pie pumpkin, uh, and then the squashes. Uh, and there are other squashes that I don't have here. There's a, a big crook neck one uh, that's white with green stripes on it. That's probably one of the tastier squashes for pie. A lot of people actually like those better than pie pumpkins. Uh, and then uh, the, the winter squash that's making all the, the news these days is called delicata. <coughs> It's a, a little uh, cream color with green striped squash. If you find that at the grocery or the market, uh, give that a try. It has a very sweet flavor. Uh, but there's lots of different things to enjoy and love with all of these different squashes and pumpkins. Not only do they look nice, but you can actually have a tasty pie or a tasty treat uh, to boot. Uh, and if you don't find any that you like or if you don't grow any, uh, you always have the option of finding it in a can at the grocery store. And while that might not be as fun, uh, it is pretty tasty. And that uh, is actually a different variety altogether. Uh, it's not really a pumpkin that looks like these. It uh, looks much different. Uh, and it's uh, lots of, of different uh, characteristics than these pumpkins, but they taste much better than these pumpkins. 
So as you're celebrating fall, if you're looking for those fall decor or the fall flavors, uh, you want to take a look at all of your pumpkin and squash options, uh, whether you set them on the front porch or you set them in a pie on your windowsill to cool. So thanks for joining me. Once again, my name is John Porter. I'm the Urban Agriculture Program Coordinator with Nebraska Extension, and I hope you enjoy your pumpkins, squash, and gourds this fall.